the creator of heaven and earth, the great spirit, Halito, grand rising, grand elevations to all the copper color aborigines out there. Get ready to start this short presentation. I just wanted to put this video out. Um, I ran and redone a previous video that I put out before. So I just kind of added a, a, took a lot away from the first video and just redone it all the way through. As you guys know, I uh, did not have the proper equipment to uh, present a proper video on this topic. So I'm going to do it right now. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Peace, love, and light. I hope you enjoy your weekend. And I'm going to get out of the way and let you guys watch this video. All right, peace. All right, all praise to the Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Great Spirit, Halito, Grand Rising, Grand Elevations to all the copper color Aborigines out there. Man, listen, this is a topic that we hear all the time. We get these comments in the comments all the time. I can go show you right now thousands of comments on my YouTube of people constantly coming in the comments trying to tell us that we are self-hating Africans, that we hate our history. Native Americans say it to us, Latinos say it to us, our own people say it to us, and white people say it to us. That's the story that everybody has concocted and everybody sticks to that same story. Oh, you guys hate you, you hate that you're Africans, blah, 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 blah. Well, let's see. Let's delve into some scholar, some scholastic sources Let's delve into some anthropology and then we're going to get some verbal testimony from the mouths of people who we know for a fact can tell us and lead us down the right path. Are the so-called black Americans in America truly African? Let's find out. All right, let's go right now. We're going to be reading. I'm not going to hold you guys either. We're reading right now. This is from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Yes, the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. This is put by, put together by scholars Merrill Tenney. This was published in 1963. All right. Watch this. We're going to read. And the reason why we need to read this and understand this, because this is the foundation for African nations. So we have to read this in order to understand. All right. This is the definition of ham. Now, if you know anything about ham, ham is Kemet, okay? Ham is Kemet. Kemet and ham is the same people, all right? That's why I wanted to go to this definition. It says, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He, meaning Kemet or Ham, he became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. So the definition, the scholars know, in the definition, the scholars know that the Negroes, the so-called black Americans, do not come from Africans. The scholars know that. He said that Ham or Kemet became the progenitor. When you Google the word progenitor, it'll tell you what the word progenitor means. The word progenitor means, let's go get the uh, definition, progenitor, a person or thing from which a person, animal, or plant is descended or originates, an ancestor or parent. That's what the word progenitor means. So the word progenitor means the father or creator of these people. 
So the scholars said that Ham or Kemet is the father or creator of the dark races of the earth. The Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites, but not the Negroes. What are these scholars saying? They are telling you that the Negroes, the black Americans, are not Africans. That's what they're telling you. That's what they are telling you. We do not descend from African nations. Because in order for you to be an African, you would have to descend from one of these four families. Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, or Canaanites. You have to come from one of those four families in order to be an African. Okay? And they said Negroes do not descend from these Africans. So now, let's go show you that Ham and Kemet is the same person. Watch. This is from worldafropedia.com. All right? Watch this. It says Kemet. They just spelling it a different way. You, you're used to seeing it K-E like up here. You're used to seeing it right here. K-E-M-E-T. That's how you're used to seeing it. But they're saying the same thing. Kemet means burnt or land of black people being derived from the root word Cam, Kim, Cam, Kim, Cam, Kim. And then what's the last word? Ham. And just in case y'all don't, y'all think I'm just making that up. Look, you can see it right here. Ham. So Ham and Kemet is the same people. Kemet is the forefather of the African nation. He's the father of the Egyptian, Ethiopian, Libyan, and Canaanite, but he's not the father of the Negro. The scholars know that. In order for them to put that in this book, in this dictionary, this is a Bible dictionary, in order for them to do that, they would have had to done thorough and extended amounts of research to be able to understand that, okay, these Negroes are not Africans. They don't come from these African nations. And we're going to find out how this was even found out, even through other, other anthropologists. We're going to show you that even they understood that the Negroes in America were not of African descent. So we got Ham and Kemet. They are the same people. Now let's go to this book to even further prove that Africans come from Ham. This book is called the Religious Instruction of the Slaves in the West India Colonies Advocated by Richard Watson. Okay, it says, For is Africa without her heraldry of science and of fame? The only probable account which can be given of the Negro tribes is that as Africa was peopled through Egypt, by three of the descendants of Ham, they are the offspring of Cush and Misraim and Put. So it says that Africa was peopled through Egypt by three of the descendants of Ham. Who did we find out Ham was? Ham is Kemet. Kemet and Ham is the same people. What, what did we find out at the, at the beginning? Ham is the forefather of all of the African nations. Okay? Now let's go back to the book. It says that Ham, they are the offspring of Cush, Hank, Misraim, and Put. That is, Cush is who? Ethiopians. What are we reading the first? It says Ham is the progenitor of who? The Ethiopians. Right there. Then in the book, it says of Misraim. Who is Misraim? Let's go back to the Bible dictionary. That is Egypt. Misraim was called Egypt. I mean, was, Egypt it used to be called Misraim before it was called Egypt. Just like Ethiopia used to be called Cush before it was Ethiopia. Who was put? The Libyans. Okay? The Libya used to be called Put before it was called Libya. Okay? You got to remember when the when the um when the when the Greeks took over Africa and they started conquering Africa, they started putting Greek names on the land and they started called they called Ethiopia uh, uh they called Kush Ethiopia. That's a Greek name. 
Okay, so when the Greeks took over Africa, start conquering, they start putting Greek names on the land so they can understand each other better when they spoke. And they called Misraim Egypt, which means bondage. And they called Kush Ethiopia. They called Put Libya. Those are all Greek names. And we know Egypt means bondage. Okay, that's what it's referring to. People here in the Americas try to say that the blacks in America uh, are from the transatlantic slave trade that started in West Africa. Now, whenever I ask many West Africans, they don't know what I'm talking about. Just like I'm asking you, you don't know what I'm talking about. So what I'm so what I'm trying to I'm trying to get to the root of is because oh, you're from there, right? You grew up there your whole life, right? Okay, so when you were a child. Have you ever heard that term? No. You never heard about the transatlantic slave trade, even growing up, never heard about it? No. So that lets me know that it is, hey, that's what I wanted to know. That's what I'm trying to get to, because yeah. everybody claims that about black Americans, but we know that we are the indigenous people of this continent of America. We are the indigenous people of this continent. And everybody try to say, oh, well, y'all from West Africa, but when you go to West Africa or when you talk to many West Africans, they don't, they have never heard about it, just like you just said, you never heard about it wash with here in America so have you know have you ever known about any uh, slave trade yeah. have you have you been taught about slave trade this slave means like a, um, like slavery like slave ships right? no 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 like the slave trade have you heard about the slave trade no. you've never heard of the no. slave trade in Ethiopia no so you've never heard about a, a bunch of Africans that got taken from to America? You never heard a question that I want to ask you. In Africa, have you ever heard anything about the transatlantic slave trade when you was in Africa? Okay, did you hear about it when you came to America? Okay, so 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 when you got to America, that's when you heard about it. But before America, you never heard about it. Okay. Now, let's go to this book right here. This book, is this is from a, uh, a scholar named uh, George M. Fredrickson. All right. He's going into a man who is an anthropologist and an expert on empiricism or the study of human skulls. His name was Dr. Samuel George Morton. This book is called The Black Image in the White Man, The Debate on Afro-American Character by George M. Fredrickson and Edgar E. Robinson. All right? Watch this. It says, the originator of the new scientific ethnology was Dr. Samuel George Morton of Philadelphia, who published a book in 1839 that promised to bring an end to loose speculation about racial origins and differences by opening an era of hard-headed empiricism. Morton's Crania Americana was the result of years of collecting and examining human skulls. As he gathered and studied the crania of different types of men, Morton became aware of the differences between white Indian and Negro skulls and of the fact that the ancient crania from a given race did not seem to differ from those of their modern descendants. Morton concluded that the races had always had the same physical characteristics and by implication, the same mental qualities. Watch this. It says in the 1840s, Morton collaborated with George R. Glyden, an Egyptologist who provided him with mummy heads and information about the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. In Crania Egyptiaca, published in 1844, Morton pointed out that both cranial and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. You see that? Morton said he took these skulls. So what's happening is Dr. Glidon, okay, he provided George Morton because he knew George Morton was an expert on empiricism, okay? 
He knew George Morton was an expert on empiricism. So he provided George Morton, I mean, Samuel Morton, George Glidon provided Samuel Morton with these skulls. And he let Samuel Morton compare these skulls to Negro slaves in the Americas. Because that's what's going on right here. In the 1840s, Dr. Morton wanted to find out the racial uh, identity of the Negro slaves in the Americas because he did not see anything in those people that resembled Africans. So he wanted to try to find out where these people came from. So Dr. George Glidon provided him with some mummy heads of some ancient Africans and he started comparing them to the Negro slaves. And he found out that they were not the same people. That's why he said both archaeological evidence show that the Egyptians were not Negroes. These are not the same people. We just read this exact same thing in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. This is a whole nother scholar right here in the dictionary saying the same thing. He said that the Negroes do not come from any one of these African nations. These are the four families of Africa, Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. The scholars say Negroes are not, they don't come from these people. They say Kemet is the, he the forefather of all these Africans, but he's not the forefather of the Negroes. We are not the same as them. And that's what we try to, uh, 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 that's what we try to make people understand when we put these documentaries out and all of that. We're trying to make people, just because we're dark skinned and we got tightly curled hair, that does not make us an African. You guys associate everybody with dark skin and tightly curled hair with Africa. No, we're not Africans. And we keep telling y'all this over and over. We're not Africans. Yes, we know a lot of our people was enslaved. A lot of our people was taken on slave ships. Yes, we understand that. And so when you talk about reparations, yes, I'm for the people that, that happened to a lot of our people. But a lot of our people were not slaves. A lot of our people were prisoners of war. Enslaved in our own home. All right? Because many, when you talk about uh, 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 slavery, many West Africans have never even heard of slavery. You've seen the video that I showed you when I was in the Uber. You, you, you just watched that video. These people have never even heard of it before. I just want to show y'all this. This is with Dr. Samuel George Morton, just to show y'all, elaborate more on him and what he, what he does. It says, Morton had published two major works on his skulls. As a matter of fact, let's just go here. It says, Morton, oh, uh, hold up. It says Morton had published two major works on his skulls. Crania Americana, which appeared in 1839, was a study of the skulls of Native Americans. Crania Egyptiaca, published five years later, analyzed skulls that had been retrieved from ancient Egyptian tombs. Morton's method, like Agassiz, was empirical and comparative. He measured the interior capacity of the skulls and then he compared the results by race. His conclusion collided in the catalog of the entire collection that was published in 1849 and reprinted many times, ranked the human races, as Morton classified them, by cranial capacity. In descending order of volume, these were Caucasian, Mongolian, Malay, Native American, and Negro. So these are all the different types of skulls that he was comparing and matching together, all right? It says subdivisions within the five categories show the, that Teutonics, Germans, English people, and Anglo-Americans had the largest cranial capacity among all groups and that American-born Negroes, Hottentots, and Aboriginal Australians had the smallest. So Samuel George Morton was an expert in empiricism, y'all. OK, so he he understood the uh, 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 the um, the he knew how to differentiate which race belonged to which race based on their skeletal structure. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. When I was in Nigeria, I did not know of the African-American story until I got to America, but until I got to America mm -hmm. and found that's, out. That, that's true. Right. I, I did not know anything about slavery. I did not know anything about slavery. And white people, that's slavery. 
<laughs> hey, <sh> <laughs> I ain't even mad at y'all about that. For real. You know what I'm saying? Black people, we be f***ing with y'all about this. Because ain't a brother or sister in this room that has been a slave. We ain't none of us picked no cotton. We wouldn't have known about it if y'all hadn't have made the movie Roots. Now, let's get this book called The Atlas of the Transatlantic Slave Trade. This is by David Eltis. Okay? The Atlas of the Transatlantic Slave Trade by David Eltis. Okay? Watch what it says. It says both, and I couldn't find this uh this online. I couldn't find it online anywhere, like as far as well, I could find it online, but I couldn't find it on archives. So I would have had to pay for it in order to read it, and I wasn't gonna pay for it when I actually have the book. So I just took a picture of it and posted it on the screen. It says both buyers, Europeans, and sellers. Africans saw the people traded into captivity on the African coast as outsiders. You see that? It said they saw the people as outsiders. So why? So this kills the notion that Africans were selling Africans into slavery. That had never happened. Africans never sold Africans. Africans were selling and trading indigenous people of America. That's what they were selling. That's why they saw the people as outsiders. They knew those people were not the same as them. So they had no problem selling these people into slavery. You would be crazy and out of your mind to think that Africans would sell their own people into slavery. That is not what happened. Africans were selling indigenous Americans into slavery. How do we know that? Jack Forbes even knows because American Aborigines were being taken or American Indians, the indigenous people of America were being taken to West Africa as slaves. They were being taken to Africa as slaves. That is documented. I got records to prove that. The indigenous people of America were taken to West Africa as slaves. They were being taken to Cape Verde. They were being taken to Ghana, Guinea, all of that. Angola, yes, they were. All right? They were being taken there to West Africa as slaves. So that's why they were able to sell and trade those people because they knew those people were not them. That's why they said the Africans saw these people as outsiders. They knew they was not the same people as them. So they didn't have no problem selling these people as slaves. So that lied that all oh, Africans were selling Africans. No, they weren't. Africans were selling the indigenous people. That's what they were selling. They were not selling their own people. That's a lie. All right. That is a lie. Watch. Let's get uh, let's get the book. Jack Forbes. I mean, let's get the video. Jack Forbes and let Jack Forbes even tell you. And this is a Native American himself. This is a Native American himself telling you that indigenous people was taken to West Africa as slaves. Watch. Well, I think the main point is to fill in a gap that has developed because of the suppression of knowledge of the interaction of black people and uh, Native American people. In other words, it's to tell the story uh, to the fullest extent possible of the interrelations between these two uh, ethnic groups with uh, both extremely rich heritages of culture and history. Where were the Native American population during the time that you studied? Well, during that time period, uh, I think virtually all areas of the Americas uh, and all of the islands uh, virtually, including uh, up to Greenland, uh, uh, for the most part, were occupied by different Native people. So the, the entire uh, continent and virtually all of the islands were occupied. The Spanish writer uh, Bartolome de las Casas, um, who is the principal author of, uh, that, we, that gives us the information from Columbus's diaries, uh, Columbus chose to finance the conquest of the West Indies by selling Native American slaves. And uh, he characterized it as his granjería, or granary. In other words, it was the granary that was going to pay for the conquest, that is, Native American bodies. And Columbus himself sent at least 3,000 and possibly as many as 6,000 or more 
Native American slaves to Europe. This, is, this begins as early as 1493. On his return voyage, he takes about uh, two dozen Native Americans to Portugal and Spain. In the subsequent voyages, many, many more are sent, uh, men and women. Now, he intends to sell them by the thousands, not only in Spain, but he mentions the uh, Azores, uh, the Canary Islands, the Cape Verde Islands off, you know, the west coast of Africa. as well as in Portugal and Spain and elsewhere. They had several kinds of slaves. Uh, they had the, the normal slave, uh, but they also had people who were called, uh, well, they were called uh, Indians from the useless islands. They were from islands where there was no gold. And so they had the right to go and remove people from those islands. The useless islands? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what well, Jamaica, mean? for example, would be a useless island because it had no gold. Inutiles, not useful. Uh, and they needed labor so badly on uh, Haiti, where the gold was found, Haiti and Cuba, uh, that they were stealing people constantly and removing them by force from other islands. Even after it was no longer technically uh, in the best uh, or possible, legally even, to enslave, they still could remove them as forced free labor, we could call it later coolie labor, right? Mm -hmm. And then they had other categories of unfree Indians as well. But uh, once the, uh, the population declined uh, in the, um, in the, uh, on the islands themselves, um, they began raiding the north coast of Venezuela and Colombia very extensively, also part of Panama. They also came up here and, and, and uh, cleaned out the Bahamas completely. All the Lucayo people. What, what period are we talking about now? Well, uh, we're into the 1440s, uh, I mean the 1540s, 1560s. Uh, many people from Florida, South Carolina is raided for slaves. Um, and, so, and also the west coast of Mexico in the 1530s. Many Mexican Indians are sold as slaves. And um, it extends on into a much later period of time. But in, a, in short, the, the tremendous numbers of Native Americans were enslaved and the Spaniards kept looking farther and farther afield for slaves to replenish the labor supply. You see that? Let's get another book. This book is called 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro with Complete Proof, A Shortcut to the World History of the Negro by J.A. Rogers. This was published in 1985. We're on page nine. This is why you think you're African right here. This guy, it says Charles Darwin predicted that the deepest roots of human evolution would be found in Africa. This man right here is the reason that you think you're African. Him, Melville Herskovitz, Franz Boas, all those people were confederate together to come up with this theory that the blacks in America came from Africa. They didn't have any uh, hard proof it was a theory because when those people were traveling the world, they were seeing the indigenous people of Africa and they were seeing the indigenous people of the Americas. And they like, man, these people look, these people look similar. Maybe these people in the Americas came from Africa. You know, that, that was the whole uh, 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 theory that was concocted. And that theory became a fact to the United States, not a fact to us because we already know the truth. We know the truth, that's because we're digging. So that became a fact in the Americas. That's not a true fact, that's not a statement. That's, I mean, that's not a truth, that's a fact to them, a fact to the United States. That's not a fact to us. But watch this, watch this, let's get some more. Let's go to page 30. This is what I wanted to show y'all, because even Africans don't come from Africa. They don't even come from Africa. Watch this, watch this. So if so, and still, and this is for all of you bad Africans out there, all of you bad Africans that run your mouth talking about I'm African, I'm African, I'm African. Okay, well if that's the case, Africans are gonna tell you that they don't even come from there. Watch. I want to read this up here first, and then we're gonna read down to uh, the, get the part about the Africans. Okay, watch this. It says Peter Martyr, the Amanusans 
of Columbus tells of Negroes living in Central America before the introduction of slavery and says these were the first Negroes seen in the Indies. You see that? There were black people in the Americas before Columbus. Okay? That's what they're telling you. There were black people in the Americas before Columbus. It said Lords Kingsboro, Antiquities of Mexico, which I have it. Professor Leo Weiner of Harvard University says the presence of Negroes with their trading masters before Columbus is proved by the representation of Negroes in American sculpture and design by the occurrence of a black nation at Darien early in the 16th century but more specifically by Columbus's emphatic reference to Negro traders from Guinea. You see that? Now they're never going to tell you that Negroes, see it was see it was black people here long before Columbus. He adds, hitherto the ethnologists imagined that Negroes appeared in the New World only during our own epoch when they were imported as slaves. Some statues of the Indian gods in Central America possess typical Negro features. You see that? So that is clear right there. Right there it is clear that there were black people in the America before slavery. Because how? Because you got to think about this. If these Indian statues portray Negro features. That means the people you call Native Americans would have either been the Negroes themselves or they would have had to encounter these people. To, or in order for them to carve these people in sculptures, they would have to know what these people look like. Okay? They have to know what they look like. Or they are the people themselves. They carved them after their own likeness. And that's what happened. They were carving themselves. It says, it is indisputable that in very ancient times, the Negro race occupied our territory, Mexico, when the two continents were joined. But watch this. That ain't what I, watch this. I want to go down here. This is what I want, want y'all to see. Watch this. It says, one of the principal reasons for this theory is, as Delafosse says, now this is referring to the African tribes. Okay, they're going to explain where these people come from. It says, Delafosse says, is all the Negro tribes of Africa assert that their first ancestors came from the East. Do you see this? It says, all of the Negro tribes of Africa assert that their ancestors came from the East. That means they did not originate in Africa. Okay. It says there is a translation of this work by F. Flegelman, Washington, D.C., 1931. This was true even in ancient Egypt. The celebrated Negro queen of Egypt, Hatshepsut, uh, Hatshepsut, sent an expedition eastwardly to hunt in Arabia from which land the Egyptians believed their ancestors came. Do you see this? So Africans don't even originate in Africa. They don't even originate there. So if they don't originate there, how can you say you're from Africa when these people don't even originate in Africa? They don't originate there. So if they don't originate there, how can you say you origin? You don't. You are, you do come from Africa. How are you gonna say you Africa and East Africa saying they don't even come from there? And these these people right here, they know their history. They know where they come from. They have their history down packed. They know exactly where they come from. Okay, they're not confused at all. They know exactly where they come from. So if they're saying that they don't come from Africa, how are you saying you from Africa? That makes no sense. Now, let's get it from an African's own mouth. Let's get it from their own mouths and they're gonna tell you that they don't descend from Africa. Watch. That knowledge he's gonna talk about today uh, to share with uh, the world. We have one more name what you to all level. And this uh, knowledge is uh, came from the Lebus uh, community. The Lebus they have a culture, Bumak. And the Lebus they have a big culture. Am Chosan Bumak. And they have a big tradition. Am Dini Osi. And also they are they have a religion. Kon Kenwaru Watane 
les bourres en gagnant recommencer au Sénégal parce que les bourres commencent au Sénégal. So it doesn't mean, for example, if you're talking about les bourres, you cannot only start in Senegal, you know, because les bourres doesn't come from Senegal. Parce que si une mamie de nous venait les bourres commencer en Inde. Because uh, his ancestors, they said Lebu is, is came from uh, India. Parce que les bourres de connaissent en Inde. Because the Lebu they used to live in India. Si une mamie de nous les bourres de venir mille ans en Inde. And his ancestors, they said the Lebu they live. Uh, they stay in, uh, in India for thousand years. What I know about Chaminuga, it's a long story of Chaminuga. Chaminuga's board was surviving in 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 Persia. Do you know Persia? Yes. That's where most black people came from. Because uh, these southern countries were not Living people, they was just forest. The time people began to travel, they came from Persia. They was leaded by the voice of a bird which was flying. That bird was showing them directions to go and the rules of praying to the other ni wale watu wa asili yani wale here in Kenya we are indigenous community because we have been here for a long time jamii wata ilitoka kule Yemen but we came originally from Yemen then came to Africa wengine waka cross the red sea others crossed the red sea and settled in Ethiopia where many settled after which we dispersed. Others ended up in Kenya. Presently, Waata are found in the coast region from Tana River. Lamu, even though in relatively few members. Kilifi, Kwale, Taita. That's where they are found. In the northern areas of Marsabit and Isiolo, I also found Wa'ata. You see that? They told you from their own mouth that they're not Africans. Okay? Now, I want to go show you guys this video because they, um, a couple of years ago, they was pushing this, you know, all blacks go back to Africa, come home, come home, come home. Well, let's see what come home look like. Okay? Because these people knew we were not the same as them. Up to 5,000 blacks are believed to have moved to Ghana from North America, the Caribbean, Brazil and Europe. For many, it's been a bittersweet homecoming. Yes, this is home. This is our new home. We've been here approximately five weeks now. Uh -huh. Of course, we've been in Ghana uh, going on four months. And this is uh, where we plan to have our entertainment room, which is... Dr. Adwoa Asatiwa left a university professorship to move to Cape Coast with her husband, Kwaku. We decided to relocate. As expected, they found they can live in relative luxury on their savings. So if you're going to retire, this is a better option than going to Florida? Or... Oh, absolutely. Well, Florida, if you go to, if you go to Florida, you have to start with a million dollars up front. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to buy you too much in Florida. But they've had to come to terms with a disturbing discovery. The Africans they see as brothers and sisters see them as strangers. We wanted to feel like we had come home. However, we later found that we weren't that welcome by the native population. But we weren't welcome is because they don't know us and we don't know them. It takes just a short visit to the local market to see the gulf of 500 years of separation. I don't want smoke. I want crack. Most locals don't even regard them as fellow blacks. You have Groupa. I want Groupa. Have... They call them a Bruni, meaning whites. How much you gonna charge me? And don't charge me old Bruni prices. Be beanie. If you charge me old Bruni, I don't buy. 
I like you, so I'm gonna buy. I'll pay a thousand, but I know you overcharge me. So is she a Bruni? She's a Bruni, is she? Yeah. So I'm not all Bruni. I'm Bibini. Okay. Okay. Yo, Ashanti. It is not a very pleasing way to be identified. You know, we don't want to be called a Bruni because we certainly weren't treated like a Bruni in the U.S. Mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. We were treated as African people. So um, that is a challenge. She's also found that people have little sympathy for them as descendants of slaves. They don't know the history. They don't know who we are. They don't know that we are Abebu. They don't know that we are descendants of the Africans that were taken here through enslavement into the various Americas. They don't understand that for the most part. But our task and our challenge is to bring this information back to our brothers and sisters here. Y'all listen, we got to wake up. We have to wake up. Listen, let, let me look. Let me let me say this. At the end, when that lady said they don't know the history of slavery. No, it's not that they don't know the history. It's that it's a fake story. That story is only in the Americas. That's why I set this presentation up in this specific order. I did that for a reason. I'm very calculated when I put out a documentary, okay? I did that for a reason, because that's why I showed you the, the Africans when I was in the Uber with them, talking to him. I'm asking him, like, have you ever heard of slavery? No, no, they have not heard of it. They don't hear about slavery until they get to the Americas. It's an American story. That's what we're trying to make y'all understand. It's an American story. That slavery came on slaves. That's all in America. When you go around the world, now you have Europeans who are going out to colonize these other lands, and they're spreading that story too. So now the Africans that you see now that's coming up, they may have heard about it now because the Europeans are spreading the narrative. But if you get the older Africans, the ones that's like 60 years old, 70 years old, and you go and talk to them and say, have you heard about that when you was a child? Did you hear the story about millions of your relatives being taken? They're like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. They don't know because it's an American story. I don't understand why is this so hard for y'all to believe? Why, why, why? Why can't y'all just believe what it really is? The truth is in your face. We are not Africans. Two different scholars said the same thing. George Morton, Samuel George Morton compared the skulls. He said, these Negroes ain't African. The Bible scholar said, Negroes is not African. You got two different people saying the same thing. Then the lady go to Africa. They said, we don't know nothing about slavery. They telling you in your face. And then I show you the pictures and put them on the screen. You see it. Oh yeah, they black. They got woolly hair, but they not Negroes. They not African. Well, what are they? And then when you, I put the pictures on the screen, y'all say they not Negroes. And then y'all come in the comments. And when I post a picture of an American Indian and it's black, y'all will say, oh, uh, uh, y'all can't be American Indians because y'all got woolly hair. Okay, well, here go a woolly hair American Indian. Well, he got woolly hair and black, but he's not an African American. Man, which one is it? We don't have no win with y'all people. Y'all going to keep this going. And all to all my copper color aborigines out there, I want y'all to pay attention to something. These people are still confederate together. These people are always going to band together and stick to the story. The Native Americans, the white people, the everybody, they're going to stick together with this story that you are a West African slave. No matter how much evidence they see, they do not care. They're going to take this to their grave. They don't care how much evidence you have. It's going to the grave with them. Don't you understand that? No matter how much you, Jesus Christ himself can come down and say, listen, these blacks in America are indigenous. They will argue with God. That's how much these people are going to take it to their grave. So you got to understand who you're dealing with. These people, not they don't care how much. Now, to the credit, of some Native Americans and some Latinos, those are our family right there. You know, the Native Americans and the Latinos who do see the truth, I look at them as my family 
because those are the people that see the truth and say, bro, because I've had plenty of Native Americans that have come to me and was like, bro, you are speaking truth. People, Native Americans have called me on my phone and we've talked for hours. And they're like, bro, y'all are indigenous, bro. I listen, they come from the reservation and they tell me the stories that they talk about on those reservations. So I know what's going on. We have conversations about this, about this, about the, the uh, conversations that they're having on a reservation. They know we're indigenous. It's all about money. Y'all think all we want is money. We don't care about your money. We got money. We're not broke. We're not bums. We don't, it's not about the money. We want our heritage. It's our heritage. It's what our ancestors fought and died for. That's what I care about. The land. The money, you could keep the money. I can make money. Money's going to come and go. We can make that. We want our heritage. We don't care about your money. I don't need a check every month. I don't want to be a part of your tribe. I don't have to be. A lot of those tribes is $5 Indians anyway. It's the heritage that we want that was stolen from us unjustly. And the internet was the worst thing that ever happened to y'all because once the internet came out, it's all over. The internet was the worst thing that could ever happen to America because once the internet came out and we can research and we are highly intelligent. So we know how to research. We can read. We can we can uh, connect the dots. And it's all over. It's all over. It's y'all. The gig is up. It's all over. It's all over. And you just need to understand that. So I got, if you think this was something, just wait. Just, ooh, I'm telling you, I got something for it. Boy, listen, I, I'm, when I, the next one I put out, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is undeniable. I, I'm not even going to tell you when I'm just going to surprise drop it and show you, you cannot, you can't, you can't touch us. You can't. We are the American Aborigines. We are the indigenous people of this land. You can't touch us. And we're going to show you that. We're going to show you that everything I post is calculated. Understand that. And all y'all talking about DNA test, DNA. Listen, let me tell you something. DNA is for entertainment only. I took a DNA test and it said I was indigenous, but I still threw it in the trash. You know why? Because a DNA test, listen, your DNA can only be compared with other people that's walking around and living. In order for them to tell you that you are indigenous, they would have to go dig up all the old skeletons, every last one of them, and bring them before you and take their DNA and, and match it with yours. That's the only way they're going to be able to tell you indigenous. You cannot take one group of Native American, Austronesian people and say, this is going to be the foundation for all Native Americans. And if you don't have this DNA, then you're not Native American. No. That's not how that works. Because if that's the case, I can go take a dog's DNA and say, we're going to use this dog. And if this, if they don't have this DNA right here, they're not Native American. So if that's the case, nobody would be Native American. You can't take one group of people and say, we're going to use this as the foundation. And whoever doesn't have this DNA, they're not Native American. No, that's not how that work. That's not how that work. You can't do that. DNA is for entertainment purposes only. You see the, uh, geolo the uh, uh, um, geology professor, he told you, the biology professor told you. He said these DNA tests for ethnicity are for entertainment value only. They cannot trace your heritage back. That's not what they're doing. They're comparing it with other people that's living and breathing. People, that's why, and people move around the world. So that's why if you take a DNA test today, you will have a certain set of results. But if you take one again, you're going to have some different results. Why? Because people move around the world. It might say you West African today. Tomorrow it might say you a white woman. As it did with the other one. Go look up. Go check out my other videos on DNA. It's, oh, it's, it's there. A, a, a complete woman that looked like a straight Negro took a test and it said she was a white Jewish woman. Then she took another test and it said something else. So right there proves that DNA cannot be trusted. Then you had two identical twins that took a DNA test and they both had different results. These, these people got the same mother and father and they identical twins. Their DNA should be 100% spot on. No, it was not. They had DNA from different areas of the world. 
So you can't even, you got, you have to do your genealogy. Genealogy is done by tracing legal records. You can go to Ancestry.com, sign up, start with yourself, and work all the way back. You have to do your genealogy. That's the only way you're going to know where you come from. So when you have all of these people in the comments on my page saying that we are indigenous, we Indian, we're doing that because we've done our genealogy. Unlike all of you coming here with all these negative comment comments who haven't done any genealogy. At least I can tell you who my 10th great grandmother is. I can tell you that on my mom's lineage. And I can tell you who my seventh great grandmother is on my father's lineage. Now, with that being said, if I can tell you my 10th on my mom and my seventh on my father, can you tell me your fourth on either side? So you haven't done your genealogy. So you're coming around here, running your mouth, saying this and saying that. Do your genealogy first and then come back and tell me. And when you find a slave ship, I'll be here waiting for you. Because trust and believe me, I look for it and it does not exist. So look, 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 look at Troy Brown. Hey, Troy Brown, he said, look, he said, uh, he said, we not Indian. We descendants of slavery. <laughs> no, hey, listen, you're not Indian. You are a descendant of slavery. I am Indian with DNA and genealogy to prove it. OK, that's the difference between me and you, Mr. Troy Brown. I actually got records to prove it, but I don't even have to go back that far because my grandparents was tribal members. So I didn't really have to go back that far. But if I go back that far, it's still Indian. Why? Because I got the records to prove it. Can you, Mr. Troy Brown, can you tell me who your third great grandmother is? No, you cannot. You don't know her name, where she lived, where she was born, where she died, who she was married to, how many kids she had. If she had kids at all, you don't know. Who, she could be a white woman for all you know. You can't even tell me that because you know why you're too lazy to do your own genealogy when you can actually go pay $20 and just do it for free. Basically, you too lazy to do that. But so you want to come in the comments. Oh, we do. We know. Don't say we. You are a descendant of slavery. You not Indian. Speak for yourself, sir. And then, but the thing is, it ain't just good for me. You can do your own genealogy, too. You can do your own genealogy too. American Indians were slaves. Then you just watch the video. If you just watch the video, then you hear the man say American Indians were sold as slaves and taken to West Africa, right? So we're not ashamed of our history. <laughs> we know we're not ashamed of our history. We know who we are. It's just you need to do your own genealogy to find out where you come from. I don't need, I don't need to ask my mom. I got records to prove it. My grandmother's still living. So I, I don't need, I got records. You need to go get your records to find out where you come from and quit telling everybody else who we are because we ain't the same. We ain't you. I'm not you and you're not me. So I don't know where you come from. Okay, you're a descendant of slavery. Can you produce a record that proves that, sir? Show us a record. What slave ship your ancestors came off of and when were they brought here? That's what you're going to have to do in order to prove that. A lot of a lot of the people who are indigenous, they're descendants of a slave too, an indigenous slave. But if you're saying that you're a, a, a descendant of an African slave, okay, what boat did they come off of? What was their African name? What was the slave master? And don't say you can't figure that out. Yes, you can, because the records exist. It's on Ancestry. It's on Family Search. It's on the National Archives. Those records exist. So don't tell me, oh, I can't find. I don't know. I know I've done people genealogy and went back to the 1500s. So don't say you can't find the records. I found Indian slave records on people's family. So don't say you can't find it. That's the ignorance of our people. Uh, this, you, see, you see it right here with this brother, Troy Brown. This is the ignorance of our people. And this is why we are destroyed right here because you have people that won't just say, you know what? Let me go check into what this brother's talking about and go do my genealogy so I can see if I'm actually Indian or not and stop believing this lie that I was brainwashed with. That's what's, that's what's going on. That's why we got too many problems. It's our own people that's bringing us down because you, now you could very well be African. I don't know. I'm not saying that you're not, but what I'm saying is don't tell us who we are. 
the individuals who have already done their genealogy. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Those, so, so, okay. So let me ask you this. So you're saying those records exist and, right? So let me ask you this. So you mean to tell me you're not going, you don't want to look at the records. You don't want to find out where your family came from. You don't want to find that. You don't want to find that out. I would want to, if there's records that tell me exactly where I come from, why don't you want to look at those records? I can tell you why you don't want to look at them. Cause you know, that you're going to find out something and you're going to find out you've been living a lie all your life, that you came from Africa. That's the lie you're going to find out. You're going to find that out as soon as you go into those records. So if you go into the records, go and look. I don't know where you come. I know where I come from. So if you know, if you, if you don't know where you come from, go do your genealogy and find out. Don't hate on everybody else because we know where we come from. Find out where you come from. And if I found out, listen, if I came right here today and I did my genealogy and I ran into some African records, I come right here and tell you I'm African. I would be I would say that proudly. Because when I first started this back when I was a kid, when I first wanted to know this information, I asked my grandmother where we came from in Africa. I didn't say nothing about America. My grandmother had to correct me on that. So that's when I knew who we were. So it ain't got nothing to do with not being ashamed of anything. If I was from Africa and I, and I saw that on my records, I'll tell you that. But don't hate on us because we've done our genealogy and you too lazy to do yours. Exactly, Manaya. He got cognitive dissonance. He been brainwashed all his life with, he from Africa, he from Africa. He, see, look, see, look, who are you to tell me what to do? Bro. You just came in here and said that we, you didn't say I, you said we, you disrespecting all these people in the chat because you see all these messages, people telling you they not African. So why are you disrespecting these people? Right. Why? If, why what are you here for? If you don't want to, if you don't accept this, okay, cool. Just go somewhere else. We're not asking you to stay here, dude. At the end of the day, do your own genealogy, find out where you come from, and we're gonna put all this to all this to rest. I hope y'all have a, 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 a blessed weekend. Be safe, and we got more uh presentations to come.